Story 1. So this doesn't help anyone, but it certainly fits. I worked in sales for a company that sold automated teller machines. We hired a new guy, and in his first week on the job, a Chinese bank cold called him and ordered, no joke, 20,000 automated teller machines. The dude received his bonus check and quit. He made over $200,000 that year. Story 2. Orthopedic surgeon. Made big sacrifices socially, traveling, and income during 20s and early 30s while training. I am 36 years old, just starting my third year of practice, and make $840,000 straight salary. Probably work about 55 hours a week. It is incredibly rewarding, but also very stressful. Story 3. I am in business-to-business -business technical sales. I sell industrial starch to paper mills and charcoal plants. The base salary is $135,000 per year. And over the past five years, the bonus has ranged from $40,000 to $70,000 based on company performance. We mostly hire engineers or at least people with a technical background for our sales roles. Story 4. I do transport for a mortuary in the San Francisco Bay Area picking up deceased individuals. My base pay is about $80,000, but I get plenty of extra hours and overtime because I'm pretty much the only one who volunteers to do the Southern California and out-of-state trips. We will only go as far as Nevada, Arizona, Oregon, and the border towns of Mexico. With all the overtime, I easily make over $150,000. Story 5. I'm a fundraising consultant. Anyone who can write well should look into writing grants. It's an incredibly niche skill. Edit. I'm still keeping a lookout in my direct messages and chats for unique questions, but just to let you know, many of the questions you all have are probably answered in the replies below. From how to get into it to my take on artificial intelligence in the future. If you have a truly unique question, feel free to reach out still, but know it may take a couple of days. Edit 2. I am sorry I didn't make this distinction in my first comment, but a lot of you have asked how I got into this gig. Unfortunately, it was after starting as a $29,990 a year scrub at a small nonprofit. Five years after that, I used my expertise and knowledge to go out on my own. But I'll also say this, that last sentence is basically the point. To all of you who are reading this who aren't even in fundraising, remember, in your current career, you are building expertise and knowledge, and that is a product in itself if you convince people it is. Think about the bar rescue guy. He's a bar consultant. You may be a bartender and not even realizing you know how to make a bar run well, and thus you have that knowledge to sell. I'm not sure how relevant or accurate they are nowadays, but I started reading about independent consulting in high school, class of 08, baby, with books by Alan Weiss. I read The Business of Expertise a few years ago and it was also a good read. So look that stuff up. And lastly, to all my fundraisers out there. I was in the industry for five years before breaking out on my own, but now that I've been on my own for five years this January, I can assure you, if you are actually a talented writer with a tact for this, you can freelance grant write as soon as you work to get your first client. Go to nonprofit events, tabling events, if you know, you know, and casually let all the other nonprofits you meet know you write grants. Go to your favorite causes and volunteer to write grants for them or to help their grant writer. Tell them you're looking for experience. Write fake grants you can show potential clients if you can't do that. The applications are all online for anyone to see. Just search any major corporation with foundation after it and you'll hit their grant portal. Create an account and complete an application. Or better yet, utilize a 14-day free trial at Instrumental, official website, and come to understand the important aspects of finding a good grant for a specific cause. We are all put here to serve, and we all agree about that, regardless of our religion or belief system. To those of you who want to make an impact and make money, nonprofit fundraising is an option. I wish you all well in all of your endeavors. Story 6. Lawyer, United States. I have an undistinguished academic record from an undistinguished law school. Took me a while to get my first legal job, which I still have. I started at $65,000. I am about to start my fourth year at $150,000. I work from home exclusively with no billable hour requirement, and my job is generally very easy and low stress. Occasionally, I get to help people. I can't complain. 
by the standards of the profession, I am not paid well. However, by the standards of the profession in my geographic area, it is a fine living. By my standards, having grown up in a rural area and quite poor, I am doing just dandy. The real question is going to be whether I try to job hop to increase my salary and possibly find more stimulating work too, or do I just look in the mirror every morning and say, bro, we are so lucky, and use my copious free time for other things? Story 7. I started a home inspection company about two years ago. I hit $100,000 in the first year and already crossed $150,000 this year. Recently, I hired an administrator for all the office and preparation work and am currently working on hiring another inspector. I need them to go out and climb in these hot Florida attics instead of me. Story 8. Scalp Micropigmentation Artist took a week-long course 12 years ago after getting laid off from my job as an entertainment editor at Playboy.com, making way more money now than I ever did in publishing. Story 9. Lineman. Applied for an apprenticeship after I got my commercial driver's license, the rest is history. Pay varies by overtime, can range anywhere from $170,000 to $300,000 depending on how much you want to work. Story 10. On behalf of my dad, he earns around $200,000 to $250,000 a year. He has got to be one of the top paid welders in Texas. He is paid an hourly rate. On top of that, his truck is also paid hourly, and then he receives a set per diem daily. When I realized that his truck made more money than me, I was shocked. In my first week working, I made around $1,800. I was surprised to see that his truck alone made my entire paycheck. Story 11. Honestly, the fastest way to get there is to job hop. I am older, and there is no longer a reward for long-term employment. Pensions are not a thing anymore, and employers do not care to retain you. Leverage a new job for better pay. Also, do not be afraid to apply for jobs where you do not meet 100% of the qualifications. Those things are a wish list for employers, and I recommend you shoot your shot. Story 12. I'm a steam fitter. Basically, I build industrial piping systems. I moved up the ladder after I got my license, and now with all the overtime on the jobs I run, I make somewhere around $200,000. Story 13. I am an astrophysicist, also known as a heliophysicist. I have devoted 40 years and counting of my life to learning and sharing that knowledge. Edit. It is certainly possible to make a decent living at heliophysics research. However, if your main objective is to make money, you can do much better in other fields. For example, look around this thread. The largest reward of research is that you get to do research. Story 14. I scrolled for a little while, surprised I didn't see anybody else say they started their own service business. I do junk removal and snow removal in Canada. I've been in business for 2.5 years. I grossed over $200,000 in 2023. I work two to four days a week during the summer and generally only when it snows during the winter. Sometimes I'm busier than that, sometimes less busy. I'm on track to make maybe $250,000 this year. Story 15. I went back to school at 27 for electrical engineering. After I graduated, I felt like I had the momentum to keep going, so I got my master's. I was able to land three different internships starting about my junior year which helped me gain some experience in the field. I graduated at 34 and landed a job at Apple. I have been here ever since. Story 16. I started making YouTube videos about speedrunning for fun. They got popular and each year I earned more and more from them. Now seven and a half years later, I'm doing it full time with nearly 2 million subscribers. I'm incredibly fortunate and didn't really seek this job out in the first place, but I'm so grateful that I get to do it. Edit. Summoning Salt is my channel's name. Story 17. Tech sales for Fortune 100 company. Averaging $225,000 over the last three years. Work 30 hours per week. Travel 25% of the time. Took a bit, but I learned how to swim in a big pond. Story 18. I earned approximately $450,000 last year. I am a nuclear consultant with a PhD who provides safety and security advice to countries, typically governments and international organizations, 
on their nuclear programs and radiological issues or problems. Additionally, I deal with real estate on the side. Story 19. I did it the boring way, working 9 to 5 over the course of a few years. Focus on a niche and sell yourself up each step of the way. 2016 to $50,000, entry-level sales job out of college. 2018 to $75,000, switch to a different company doing the same thing with larger deals. 2019 to $95,000, promoted to supervisor. 2020 to $105,000, poached for a corporate role at the same company because I was familiar with the mechanics of how salespeople interacted with the internal tools and sold the product. 2021 to $135,000, promoted in corporate role. 2022 to $150,000, switched to a different company doing the same thing, less bonus. 2023 to $175,000, switched roles at the company. 2024 to $200,000, joined a larger company. The key thing is, I never switched industries and stuck with it when it was bad. I learned the business at the beginning, then the systems, then watched how the industry changes over time. And then finally, how money is made when things are bad. Things that worked for me. 1. Have a short-term goal and tell people. Half of the battle is just telling your leaders what you want so when the opportunity comes that matches your goal that you shared, they think of you. Caveat, do the role you were hired for effectively first. 2. Then keep searching for, yes. I got told no at some point at every progression, so I found someone who would advocate for me and say, yes. If it wasn't happening, I would then look for a company that would say, yes, it's not exciting and it may not work. However, I still think this approach has the highest odds with the lowest risk. You have got to take that bet on yourself and put yourself out there. Good luck. Story 20. Lawyer. But I advise anyone who asks not to go into law. My wife is a specialist dentist making about four times what I do, and she works four days a week with tons of vacation time. If our kids are driven, I will absolutely advise them to go into dentistry and own their own practice. Dentists make excellent money. Owners of dental practices, which in many states are also required to be dentists, make a significant amount of money. Story 21. Assistant Project Manager. Started working there when I was 18, broke $100,000 at 34, and I'm currently 42. I only have a high school diploma. Most of the time, switching companies is the only way to get a big salary bump, but I lucked out. Story 22. Lawyer here, making $520,000 to $550,000, with a base salary of $390,000 and a bonus ranging from $130,000 to $160,000. My pay is very standard for a lawyer at a large corporate firm, as lawyers in large law firms are paid in lockstep for the first seven to eight years. I have five years of experience, and essentially every other sixth-year lawyer at a large firm in a major U.S. city makes the same amount I do. It takes way more of my time than I would like, but it is exciting and pays well. Story 23, just out of curiosity, for anyone replying here that makes over $150,000, do you work insane hours to achieve that, such as 55 to 60 plus hours a week, including overtime? It would be surprising to think that one can make that much and essentially just work a standard 40 hours per week. There is definitely something to be said for work-life balance, even when making six figures. Edit. Thank you to all who have replied. Not gonna lie, I'm jealous but it's awesome to hear that many, if not most of you, have a good overall work-life balance without too many crazy hours. As for me, I will likely have to work until I am 95, and you will probably find me wearing a blue vest and handing out stickers to little kids at the entrance of a Walmart or something for a meager wage, laughing out loud. Story 24. Lawyer. Five years ago, I was an otherwise unemployed Lyft driver whose highest pay had been $50,000 as a contractor. Then I went to law school. People pay lawyers a lot of money. Story 25. High school teacher. But I live and work in a high cost of living area, have over a decade of experience, a master's degree, 75 plus hours of continuing education credits, and I'm working a 1.2 this year meaning I gave up my prep period and teach six classes instead of five and get 20% extra pay. 
All that puts me just barely above $150,000 for the 2024 to 2025 school year. Presumably, next year they'll only need me to teach five classes and I'll be back under $150,000. Also, I get paid a little more in cash than many nearby districts, but my district doesn't provide health insurance, so I have to buy it on my state's exchange. Story 26. I work in information technology for the government. Started off as tier two help desk support with no degree about 20 years ago for a semiconductor company. Laid off twice in a seven year span. Now I do senior IT asset management stuff along with some project management if I have to. $150,000 plus and I take no work home with me. From eight to five and I'm done for the day. It's not glamorous, but I like to share to give people without a degree hope. I've obviously been pretty lucky, but don't think you need to be stuck doing a $50,000 help desk job. Find a niche that you can fill or use whatever skills you already have to sell yourself. I had a pretty solid background in customer service, big box middle management, so I used that to my advantage. I make it very clear that I might not be the most technical person in the bunch, but I for sure will have the best customer service slash rapport and have made a career out of being the bridge between IT and non-IT staff, taking overcomplicated IT explanations and simplifying it the best I can. Anybody with problem solving and comprehension skills can do what I do. Edited salary to reflect actual take home pay. Story 27. I sell websites to small businesses. I have a whole agency with SEO, search engine optimization guys, developers, and designers. I sell $150 a month subscriptions for a website and unlimited edits. I have about 85 clients in various packages, and the rest is lump sum jobs for $3,500 minimum. Currently on track to do $180,000 this year. No WordPress either. All custom coded. It's a nice living. Story 28. I only made $150,000 a year hourly as a contractor, hired on it only approaches that with total compensation. But they have one-to-one -one 401k match and the company is great, so I am comfortable. Applications developer, Salesforce, fully remote work from home. If I wanted to leave and make $150,000 plus base with my experience, I imagine it would be quite trivial. But my company is awesome and so are my coworkers and I can't tell you how much money I'd sacrifice for that. If you can learn how to code, you probably can. There is a lot of money people will pay you to do relatively easy jobs. Well, it's not easy, developer work can get exceedingly stressful. But as someone who used to make $12.50 an hour, nothing is more stressful than a nine to five with three hours of commute that forces you to stay conscious through menial tasks for eight hours and stay conscious of your bank account if you ever want to order a pizza or buy a video game console. I'll gladly put in 12 to 15 hour workdays and occasionally grind over weekends to avoid ever being forced to do that again. Edit. I do not commonly do 12 to 15 hour workdays, it's just a quirk of the job I'm salaried, so some days I work 5 hours, some days 10, some days I don't do anything, and occasionally deadlines or production fires mean I'm working into the AM. I typically love my hours though. I did work one job where I was constantly working into midnight on the regular. It didn't work out, and yes it's unhealthy very poorly communicated, but I think my point was that I feel like most jobs that pay less than mine are significantly more time and energy consuming. At least, certainly every job I had before becoming a developer.